This is your WXEO Daily News Roundup for Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 FM and 12.30 AM in Wausau. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Two hospitals in western Wisconsin closed today. HSHS announced in January it would close Sacred Heart Hospital in Eau Claire and St. Joseph's Hospital in Chippewa Falls. Prevea Health is also closing its clinics across western Wisconsin this spring. Wisconsin's child care industry could run out of government subsidies in June of next year. After that, Governor Evers says there could be trouble for Wisconsin child care centers, the workers who depend on them, and the businesses that depend on the workers. This is no uh, uh, hyperbole going on here. There will be lots of people that will be going out of business, and they and they and we can't afford it as a state. More with Evers on the empowered caregiver this weekend on Civic Media. Political advertisements in Wisconsin with content made by artificial intelligence will now have to have a disclaimer. The bipartisan bill is designed to help voters decide whether what they see is true or not. It's one of 54 bills Governor Evers signed into law yesterday. Wisconsin voters could add two amendments to the state constitution on April 2nd. One would outlaw private donations to local election officials. Sam Leibert is with the group All Voting is Local. He's urging people to vote no. There's so much concern about third-party funding. Let's have that discussion in the state budget, at our local levels. The other question would specify who can legally serve as a poll worker in Wisconsin. Democrats say the amendments would make it harder to vote. Republicans say they'd promote election integrity. Wisconsin Supreme Court Justice Janet Protasewicz says she won't recuse herself from a case about voting on wheels. She denied a request for recusal yesterday, even though the court hasn't decided if it'll take the case. Conservatives are suing the city of Racine, claiming a voting van to collect absentee ballots was illegal. Wisconsin got off to a snowy start to the day. The National Weather Service issued a winter weather advisory for most of the state through mid-morning. The Department of Transportation was asking drivers to slow down and leave plenty of room for snow plows. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WXCO News, I'm Brittany Merlot. Three Wausau area men are charged with reckless homicide in the fatal Stevens Point assault. Three of the four men were charged with first-degree reckless homicide yesterday as a party to the crime in the fatal Stevens Point assault that took place Friday. Christian Emerson, Brandon Boehm, and Arlen Sangster have all been charged and face up to 40 years in prison. The Portage County District Attorney's Office says that due to the age of the victim, the maximum incarceration for each defendant is increased by six years. Bohm has been charged as a repeater due to his prior record of misdemeanor convictions and faces an additional two years of initial confinement. Emerson has been released from custody after posting a $50,000 cash bail and has an initial court appearance on April 3rd. Bohm and Sangster are being held pending a bond hearing on Thursday. After investigation, it's now been determined Damien Kitzrow was not directly involved in the assault and will not be prosecuted in connection. A well-known Antigo area businessman has been charged in an embezzlement case. 69-year-old Gary Kuyper is accused of stealing thousands of dollars from a Langlade County town in a fire department and remains right now in the Langlade County Jail on a $500,000 cash bond. When investigators showed him a spreadsheet tracking the money, he told them, I'm guilty. Town board members confirmed he had full access to town funds and was the only person signing checks for the town. A judge has given him until April 1st to obtain an attorney. And the Wisconsin Beef Council is launching a two-week fundraiser, donating all proceeds to Feeding Wisconsin to purchase beef for families in need. Working with a local apparel company, the Wisconsin Beef Council is selling gray and black t-shirts, long sleeve tees and sweatshirts that feature beef cuts with the text, You can't live a full life on an empty stomach. The shirts are available now until April 2nd and can be purchased online. Lincoln County is set to give people free in-depth mental health training this spring. The county's Health and Human Services building will host the first of two planned mental health first aid sessions on April 1st from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. It's only available for the first 30 adults who sign up, designed to help spot warning signs of mental illness and substance use disorders and to give people knowledge on when to start conversations with people who may need them. The Merrill Fire Chief says similar types of training have been offered to their department. 
students and have been important for them while out in the field. Registration for the April 1st session must be completed by Monday. There will be a second mental health first aid session in Tomahawk, split over two parts in May. And Bone and Joint is now offering physical therapy in Merrill, and they're welcoming Cindy Kohler to the new location. And starting in April, Bone and Joint will also offer occupational therapy at its Merrill location on Mondays. The Hiawatha Sports Bar will be hosting a visit from America's Best Restaurants later this month. A spot that's more than 50 years old, this restaurant and lounge closed its doors for good in September of 2020. But just a few months later, was reopened by a trio of best friends. Chris McMahon, Bobby Reed, and Mike Moore are now proud to announce that the national media and marketing company will be there on March 28th, focusing their attention on locally independently owned restaurants. Named after the Amtrak train line that runs between Milwaukee and Chicago, Hiawatha Sports Bar on Grant Street offers a solid array of American dishes like burgers, apps, sandwiches, and a Friday fish fry. The restaurant's finished episode premiere date will be announced on their Facebook page and will be featured on America's Best Restaurants website as well. And the Wisconsin DNR is now accepting entries from 3rd to 5th graders for the Air Air Everywhere Poetry Contest. And that's what you need to know. I'm Brittany Merlot for WXCO. Badger women in the Frozen Four. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Wisconsin Badgers women's hockey team, led by Kirsten Sims, are in New Hampshire for the Frozen Four. Looking to repeat as national champions, they face off tonight against Colgate. Badgers head coach Mark Johnson. Obviously, the magnitudes of the game uh, are, are higher. Uh, everybody can see the finish line now. Uh, there's only four teams left, and, and the season's over uh, on Sunday, and somebody's going to be uh, a national championship uh, Sunday afternoon, early evening. Baseball, the Brewers lost to the Giants last night, 7-6. to six. That snapped Milwaukee's five-game winning streak. NBA, the Bucks down the Nets, 114-108. to Giannis able to play after missing two games with a sore hamstring. March Madness, it's the Badgers and James Madison University. Wisconsin back in the big dance for the first time in two years. Max Klesman asked if they're excited for tonight's game. For sure. Yeah, no, I can't wait. I can't wait to just go out there and shoot around and, like, put up a shot at the March Madness logo and they're going to shoot around. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Patricia Ward-Kelly is ending a long drought of people having no idea who she is. Ward-Kelly was a TV writer in her mid-20s in 1985 when she met Hollywood legend and Singing in the Rain star Gene Kelly, who was in his mid-70s. Oof. But the widow Kelly said she never considered their age difference. Mm-hmm. They fell in love but took things slow, marrying five years later, which would have put Kelly in his 80s. Whew. If ever there was a time to rush into something. There will be a third and final Downton Abbey film coming to theaters. The New York Post reports Imelda Staunton, who plays Lady Maud Bagshaw, will return, as will Oscar nominee Paul Giamatti, who returns as Harold Levinson. Staunton let the news of the threequel slip in an interview with the BBC. She says she doesn't care if she wasn't supposed to say anything or gets in trouble for doing so. Now that's just cheekiness for cheekiness sake. Pete Davidson will not be returning for his second season of Bupkis. But it's Davidson who is pulling the plug on The Peacock Show, which is a semi-autobiographical look at his life. Davidson says he wants that chapter of his life to be over, which wouldn't be so bad except that fans of the show will be left in the lurch since season one ended with a car crash in which his character's fate was uncertain. Not a good sign when even the star of the show doesn't care what happens to the main character. It was a great run for Jeopardy! rock star Ben Chan, but all good things must come to an end. The St. Norbert philosophy professor went on a Jeopardy! run that saw him finish 16th all-time in regular play with over $250,000 in winnings and 25th all-time with $354,000 in change. In addition to all his winnings, Chan hosted several watch parties in the Green Bay area where he was cheered on by local folks. Thanks for letting us be part of your fun ride, Ben. Now, how about Alone? A new trailer dropped for American Horror Story, Delicate Part 2. In the trailer, Kim Kardashian and Emma Roberts play best friends who share a kiss. Fans attacked Kardashian's acting ability on multiple platforms soon after, and the New York Post reports that the comments on social media were overwhelmingly negative. People on social media reacting negatively? Who ever heard of such a thing? The 12th season of the popular FX show drops April 3rd and can be streamed the next day on Hulu. The Boss is back. The New York Post reports Bruce Springsteen has resumed his tour that was paused due to multiple illnesses that started last August, two days after I saw him live. Winning! One of the illnesses was undisclosed. The other two were peptic acid disease and COVID-19. The boss is officially back playing his typical three-hour shows in multiple cities and countries over the next nine months, unless he comes down with rickets or scurvy. 
For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, every night between 7 and 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Off and on, snow will continue into early this afternoon with about another inch or so possible by the time it winds down. 36 today with wind northeast at 5 to 15. Tonight, clear 13. Tomorrow, partly cloudy 34. Looking at the potential for more snow with some rain mixed in by Sunday, Monday into Tuesday. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Temperature now 24. That's your WXCO Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at bullfallsradio.com.